All right, it looks like there is seven, eight people here, so I can start talking. Buongiorno! Good morning, everybody. Coming to you from a stinker in Southwest Sydney, Australia. It is humid. It is disgusting. It is muggy. This is my least favorite weather in the world. The sky is overcast, but it feels like it's 45 degrees outside. Worst weather in the world. Sticky shit. You know what else is sticky shit? Dropping points to Spezia at home. That's where the hype train is coming from this morning. This morning, for the first time all season, I genuinely feel like we are not running away, but everything is aligning for us. And we didn't even kick the goddamn ball this morning. It was it was ridiculous, man. I don't know if anybody caught the back end of Milan Spezia, but if that was us on the end of those refereeing decisions, I would not be happy. Something seriously needs to be done about the refereeing standard in Serie A. It's not good enough. It's not good enough. The ref was so quick to blow that whistle and not give Junior Macias the advantage. But hey, all is well that ends well. And those drop points, they could really come back to bite them because they, they need to play Juve the day after we play Venezia. Both games at the Miazza. Pitch is going to look like, you know, a big block of graded cheese with grass on it gross man like what a horrible pitch to play on um i don't feel bad or anything it is what it is like at the end of the day milan are at that stage where we were at sort of at the back end of spalletti they're almost there they're almost there they're, they're gonna get it right in the next couple of years i feel but your depth's not good enough maldini and i forget their director's name maras something maras or something like that it's just, they need to be a little bit smarter. They need to be a little bit smarter. I know that the Milan fans like to say that they're the best uh, the best thing since sliced bread. You know, Maldini's a great director. He's bringing the culture back. But come on, man. You, you let two starters go for free. Uh, at the end of the day, the, the players that you've brought in are good, but are they good enough to win a league title? You know, the short answer is no. If you want to argue and debate it, that's fine. I'm willing to do that, but I truly don't believe that. You know, I'm a pessimistic. Masada, that's the one. Thanks, Pietro. Thanks, bro. Um, <laughs> you know, how many, boys, how many years did we go through under the banter era and even under Spalletti where we knew start, you know, not only our starting 11, let alone our starting 11, but our bench was weak, very weak, and a couple of injuries and we'd be dropping like flies. Inter's had the luxury of not having many injuries this season, but they've also got a ridiculously fit, oiled squad that is a domino effect from every little minute of hard work of the last five years. They're fit, strong, really, really good motherfucking players that we've got. Really good. Really good experience. Really good ability. And that draw in Bergamo yesterday, it, it feels better today. But I'm still thinking, imagine Danilo D'Ambrosio scored at the end. Or imagine Jacob put one of his goals in. Imagine we actually won that game yesterday. Holy shit. Start tattooing it. So it's, it's stupid to talk like that because we're only plus due. We're only plus due, but we've got a game in hand. This Bologna game, man, I swear to God, it, they might as well forfeit it. They were so bad today. They've lost four out of their last five. When they're even more tired at the end of the season, you think they're going to want to play the game? We whacked them 6-1. And I was telling Bruno when he was like, bro, we beat, we beat them 6-1. I'm like, bro, that's not the point. There's a whole other game coming. I see the point. I see the point now. We'll probably slap them up again. But we need to make sure we're in a sort of position plus Sette, plus Otto. We need to be in a, a very commanding position in the league for that to happen. You know, you, you can't go awarding into three points for the Bologna game if you're only plus two or plus three. You can't do that. It would have to be something ridiculous where the game is scheduled for like the last four or five games of the season. And we get to that point and may, maybe we're two or three games ahead, seven to nine points to 10 points, and they can call it then. They can call it then. Anyway, let's go straight to the comments. It's been a nice little long intro, and I'm, I'm just buzzing this morning. I'm buzzing. That's why I had to get this out there nice and early. Forza Sana. Thanks for coming in, my bro. Forza Pietro, my G. Uh, it's because I'm Italian. Definitely is because of that. Sensi is going to Sampdoria. Yes, he most likely is. It's on the agenda to talk about today, man. I'll get to that. Uh, Matt Pickham is in the house. Thank you very much. It's so cold here in Michigan. Man, I can't wait to come and visit one day. I can't wait to go and watch a Detroit Pistons game. I bet no one has ever said that in the world. Uh, Pietro, Milan, Rob, uh, we don't give a damn. Nah, we don't give a damn, bro, 100%. 
Milan got wrapped at the 96th minute. I could not believe it, man. Like after they were pressing the goal for so long, after they thought, after I, I was really convinced that they were going to grab the winner. And when it went in the back of the net, I was like, that's harsh. That's very harsh. Too harsh, to be honest. Um, the flow says, use all the reserves you can against Empoli. Second star is the main mission. Bruv, well said. This game against Empoli, ah, oh, I don't want to be the one to say it, but it sort of turned into like a glorified friendly in a way. Not, not like that, but you've got a chance to smack up Venezia on the weekend. I really, I think Inzaghi is putting two different teams out there. I think he's putting two completely different teams out there. And that's what we're pretty much going to discuss. Um, so yeah, welcome Faz to the chat as well. It's, it's good to have you, my brother. So let's, let's start thinking um, about Empoli, shall we? Or should we keep talking about Milan and Spezia? I don't know. But um, our, our team news is pretty standard. We don't have any injuries. Uh, so we can pretty much um, do whatever we want in terms of fielding who we want. Now, the back three, obviously, we need to give some. I think De Vrij might come back in to head the back three in this one, just to make sure you've got one of the starters or, you know, someone with the most security of our regular back three heading that line. Also, I'm having a little bit of a technical difficulty. So for some reason, my camera stopped. Sorry, if I'm out, bear with me for like 10 seconds and it'll come straight back. Um, so I think D'Ambrosio probably gets the nod at right center back. Let me know in the comments if you agree with that. Probably going to see D'Ambrosio. Uh, now, Pietro's saying Kolarov. I, I would say that... Uh, that that's your least likely player to appear in this fixture. Um, he's had a lot of problems, and I think he's just had a recent problem with his back, which isn't good. You know, we've we've kept hearing about how much of a presence he is in the locker room and how much of a coach he is. I really think that's his role now, man. I don't think he's coming back into the lineup at all. I like the rest of what you're saying. I don't think Radu gets in. I don't think Radu ever gets in, but I do think Ranokia gets in uh at somewhere in the back three now he might actually head the back three and you might see devray move over to the right doubt that as well maybe maybe inzaghi's really picky and just wants to keep it position for position in which case ranocchia starts over devray uh vecino galliadini correa and vidal all in 100 percent uh alexis sanchez wants to rant and rave about how he loves to start so much start him as well start sanchez against uh next to correa this is not atalanta this is empoli you want to talk the talk go in against empoli and do something are we asking too much? Are we asking too much of Alexis Sanchez to perform as a starter against Empoli? Hopefully not. So, um, Franco saying Lautaro, mm -mm, just, just rest them. Rest the hitmen. Rest Lautaro, rest Jekyll. Jekyll always needs to be at 110% or else he's going to bomb every single chance in the book. Franco, my G, I like that lineup though. Handanovic can't play twice in two positions though, my guy. Um, although he, he, you know, after his performance yesterday, he just might be able to. But I think what you mean to say is uh, D'Ambrosio, Scrinia, Bastoni, Gagliardini, Vecino, Vidal, Damian, Di Marco, Correa, and Lautaro. Out of that lineup there, I take Handanovic, D'Ambrosio, uh, replace Handanovic again with Ranocchia. Uh, keep Bastoni in there if you like. However, um, I wouldn't be completely against starting Di Marco at left center back. But it looks like, you know, I'd rather give the rest to Perisic. So well, well done on that one. So Bastoni can get another start for me. He's ridiculously fit. There's no reason why he can't play this game. And then he'll probably be subbed as well. Galliardini, Vecino. Wow. Doesn't that give you PTSD from the Spalletta era? Ooh. 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 That's bad. I don't know if you can chuck that midfield three in Vidal. Where's the creativity going to come from? What are you just going to stomp on everybody in Empoli's side? That's, that's, that's too much uh, untechnical muscle in the midfield for me. Darmian definitely will probably get the nod here, although Donfries might be the smartest selection just to make sure that you've always got the pace on the side. He could be a catalyst for a game like this. Although if Darmian gets the nod, that's fine. I think, um, yeah. Yeah, there was an opportunity against um, Atalanta where if, I forget who it was, maybe it was Jekyll. If someone had passed and all laid it off to Darmian, he was in a prime position to slap one in. Uh, Di Marco to start over Perisic, yes, and Correa and Lautaro. I would swap Lautaro with, um, with Sanchez. Uh, once again, you want to talk a, a big game. You want to start against sides like Atalanta and underperform. You know, show us that you can at least perform against Empoli as a starter. He's done that before. He's come in against weaker sides as a starter and played well, but he is best off the bench. It's nothing personal against him. He's just becometh of age. 17 people on Inter Worldwide at an inconvenient time for most people in the world. I salute you for that. Thank you very much. Like the video. Like the video. 
Like the video, it helps me and show it around, whatever you want to do. Matt Pickham says Bastoni to rest for sure. He looked gassed at the end. I stand corrected uh, 100%, man. If, if that's what you're saying, Matt Pickham, you probably analyzed it a little bit better than I did. Um, in which case, you know, maybe Kolodov does have to get a game, but he can't play. Can't play. He sucks. That, that's it, man. He came on to get Salernitana as a substitute and he sucked when we were up four goals. I don't want him at the start of the game when the score's at 0 0. By the way, since he's on loan to Sampdoria, yes, he definitely is. I've got the article up from Football Italia. I'm going to share that in a second. Um, yeah, Dumfries. Yeah, Dumfries did play well yesterday, Pietro. I agree, 100%. 100%. Let's head over to that website right now, actually. Here we go. So Sensi uh, has agreed a uh, loan move to Sampdoria. It's good for him. Um, it is good for him, man. He's not going to get the run, the 26-year-old. And he's just out of favor completely to the point of no return. And if he wants any shot at making this World Cup squad, which I actually don't think he can make now, I think he's been so out of form and out of play that I don't think he'll make the World Cup if Italy qualify for the World Cup. What am I talking about? What a stupid thing to say. Anyway, um, he needs minutes to resurrect his domestic career at all costs. Forget national team anyway. He needs to resurrect his domestic career because he was the best player under Antonio Conte for the first two months. And then after that, it's all really gone to um, gone to Kaká, hasn't it? Not good. It's absolutely kaput. Uh, Dumfries, big shout out for Dumfries again. He's really good. Manny, how you going, man? Good to see you in the chat. I really hope Milan finish outside the top four. Oh, wouldn't that be oxygen? Uh, what a fraud team, especially the coach. We definitely need to play Sensi. Sensi's out, bro. He's out. He's out and about. He's going to Genova. He is going to that beautiful city to the better club who have just sacked Diversa, um, may I say. So that's an interesting situation at Sam. That's an interesting situation at Sam. That whole city, like obviously in the pits, did you see Genoa get smacked up by six this morning? Ugly, ugly. Genoa are shit. I've been saying for years that they need to go down. You can check my early videos. I've been saying for ages Genoa are due for a relegation. Uh, Nick's Knox says Gags comes up against mid-table clubs. Oh, Galliardini is a shoe in for this game, bro. Galliardini would be one of my first names on the team sheet. I'll be thinking about this game and be like, all right, cool. Danilo, you fit. Andrea, you fit. Roberto, you fit. Perfect. Matias, you fit. And anybody else. But like our lack of creativity leads me to suggest we should be playing Sensi or Brozovic or Hakan in this game because can you really play a midfield three against this Empoli side who likes to counterattack, who likes to press as well to a certain extent? That midfield three is going to get absolutely shot. These Empoli players have played a lot of Serie A this season. A lot of Serie A. And they're not underperforming. They are overperforming. Are they still in the top half of the ladder? I need to know this for the Serie A roundtable tonight on Football Worldwide. And hopefully a lot of you watching can tune in. Let's have a look. Last time I checked, they were ninth. But I know they dropped to 11th at one point. So, And I know they haven't been as great lately. So here they are, still in 11th uh, after playing 22 games, 29 points. Let me share this for... You guys, what a goal from Vlahovic today. I haven't seen it yet. All I heard is that he bombed a, a Panenka, but that's okay. We can't all be Andrea Pidlo in his prime. Uh, so it's looking uh, bene bene. So Empoli, 29 points. See, that's really, really good, man. That's impressive for a side that's just come up from Serie B. Eight victories in the calendar season, five draws. You know, they haven't won in five games, though, so they're not in form. They are not in form, which means that we we, we should still be able to go to these guys with our B team and win the game 2-1, 3-1, 2-0. Like, you never know. Getting eliminated would be a shock, and we've got a cup. This guy's a cup manager. Let's not forget, at the end of the days, boys and girls, this guy is a cup manager. Simone Limone Inzaghi is a cup manager. He loves the Supercoppa, loves the Coppa Italia, so... He's going to go into this game wanting to win. And we are lucky that we've got a very winnable fixture at home in Serie A this weekend. Milan just dropped points to Spezia at home, okay? There's nothing easy about any game in Serie A. Look how pessimistic I am. Look where Venezia is on the ladder. Get cuts. And I'm still shitting it. Haven't won in five games. You know, that 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 is such an opportunity. Such an opportunity for us to absolutely steamroll ahead in Serie A. This sort of gift that we've gotten this morning, it doesn't come along very often at this point of the season. This isn't match day two. This isn't match day 12. I know it's not match day 32, but it's it's getting there, man. It's getting there. Every three points to us at the moment is like gold. So take care of business against Venezia. 
you really narrow in on these fixtures against Milan and Napoli with the overall objective, having the luxury of the overall objective, don't lose the fixture. You don't lose the fixture. It feels like you win these fixtures. I know it's not as good as winning the fixtures, but ain't nobody here going to tell me that at plus four, plus five, plus six, plus seven, drawing against the team who's next below you doesn't feel like winning. It's a double-edged game. It's a double-edged game. Winning completely blows that shit out of the water. And if we do get three points uh, against Venezia, my next video will be much more like calculated in terms of how we can get points in the next two games to make sure that we run away with this league. You get three points against Venezia on Sunday. Mamma mia. You get three points against Venezia on Sunday. It's almost like you get to dictate the league on your terms. It's still early, but I'm not going to sit here and deny the obvious when I look at it. I'm not making excuses for this fit team. I'm not making excuses for this injury-free team. No way. Let's go to some comments. Thanks to the 20 people who've joined me this morning. Make sure you like the video, share it around, all that fancy shit. Uh, the flow says, you very slowly but surely coming for Milan. Facts. Facts. I will not be surprised if they end up second. I fully expect them at some point to still scare me into thinking they are going to win this title. It's a mess of a mentality to have. But this is what comes with being an Inter fan. It's sick. I'm not even going to sit here and justify it. I'm not even going to sit here and try and explain it. It's just how it is, Katsu. It's just how it is. Until they are mathematically eliminated, I don't feel normal. They are $23 on the betting agencies to win the Scudetto. You know, you want to really make sure you wipe your tears away with $100 bills. You can start chucking small bets on them. But I don't think it's going to happen. They don't have what we have at the moment. And that's facts as well. Milan will play against the Gobi. Yes, they will. You know, let's check when those fixtures are so we can see if we're either watching it with a big smile or watching it a little bit more nervous. Um, we will play Venezia at 4 a.m. on Sunday for me. What a convenient time. Um, this doesn't make sense now. Yeah. And Milan will play, what was it? 4 a.m. Sunday for us. Monday. Perfect. <laughs> you beat Venezia on Sunday, 4 a.m. in the effing morning. You beat Venezia on that Sunday. It's popcorn. It's popcorn and limoncello at 6.45 a.m. on a Monday. I'm still on school holidays, man. It's all good. It's popcorn and limoncello at 6.45 a.m. on a Monday morning. That's what I'm talking about. Milan and Juve draw would be great. That would be football pornography, Matt. And yeah, awesome. Hope Ruben and like, if we can get the three points against Venezia, hand on my heart right now. Sorry, hand on my heart right now. If we get three points against Venezia, if it can't be a draw, you got to cheer for those guys. You know who I'm talking about. You actually need to hope that Juve pull a win. Because if we win against Venezia, it really is in our best interest for them to grab those points away from Milan. The difference between Milan getting three and zero in that game is incredible. So, you know, they, they lost this morning. Back-to-back -back losses at this point of the season when we get back to possible, uh, sorry, when we collect another three points. I know I'm talking early again, but hey, you can only work with what we're given at the moment. How you going, Ross? How you going? I apologize if I've never seen your name here before, but if you are new, thank you so much. Like and subscribe, my friend. It's really good to see you, Ross Talarico. Well, let me know where you're from as well, brother. There are still many twists and turns left in Serie A. Milan have an advantage of not playing in Europe in the next few months and Inter have some tough games in February and March. Facts, let's not get carried away. Let's not get carried away at all, but only working with the information that we're getting. And I like to take it game by game. I really do like to take it game by game. I'm, I don't look ahead very often. I really don't. I'm a very pessimistic fan by nature. If you've been watching the channel for a long time, you know that. But if this were any other team in our position, you just have to look at it objectively and go, it would be uh, catastrophic of them to start dropping the ball now. And it's not like we, we're going we're gonna to be coming up against a, a top six side on the weekend. It, it's a beatable side. We beat Venezia in Venice. We've got them at home. We've got a great record at home. It's expected that we win this game, yeah? You know, we're the champions. You know, they're, they're, 
I want to be conservative, but at the same time, I, I can't play the anti-jinx to the point where it just makes me sound retarded. Um, look at the 7th of Feb. Yeah, it, it's that's that's the point I was going to get to next. On top of all this, the derby waits around the corner. That's why I'm trying not to get too gassed and just take it, just wait till the Venezia game. You win that Venezia game. Now it's all about how do you stomp on the throat and make sure that we're safe. Because you beat Venezia, it's never been a better time to face Milan and Napoli. Let's face it, man. Like, that's a confidence-riding fixture at a critical point of the season. Maybe a bit better to play them a little bit later on. A little bit later on. But, but it's a very, very convenient time for us to make a statement in a luxury that we shouldn't have had. Because Milan should not have dropped points this morning. They really shouldn't have. It was, it was ridiculous, to be honest. Uh, do you think the refs will compensate Milan for the Juve game with the mistake they made today? It's a big mistake. It's a big mistake. Uh, so, I don't know, man. Hey, bro, if Milan beat Juve, I'll be far from upset. I'll be concerned about the Scudetto race, but there, there are never enough times for them to lose. Never. Uh, it says 6th of Feb, my bad. Yeah, yeah. Whenever the dead be is, bro, it's it's going to be hype. And as long as we come out of there without a loss, I think Salenitana will win the Scudetto, Serie D Scudetto. He's a funny guy, isn't he, this Samir? He's a very funny guy. Uh, we have Liverpool too, mate. Yeah, I know we have Liverpool coming up. We have, we're, It's going to be tough, man. It's going to be tough. No one's getting too gassed here. No one's getting too gassed here. We're just I'm just looking at them dropping those sort of points and going, mentally, how do you start to come back from that to the point, what, what are you going to win every game till the end of the season? I'm trying to think about how many games we will drop in comparison to Napoli and Milan. To be honest, I'm very impressed with the way Napoli are sort of grinding their way through with Spalletti. It's quite well. It's quite well. It's very, very reminiscent of his first season under us. Very reminiscent. Uh, it'd be very curious to see if at some point around match day 29, 30, 31, 32, does Napoli go on a slump and end up around about fifth or sixth, only to claw it back at the last second. That would be poetic, and I would cheer for it. Have bigger time. Um, some facts about our game against Empoli. Thanks to the 22 people that have joined me. It's been a really, really nice chat. Promise I won't keep you too much longer. We're unbeaten in 10 Coppa Italia ties against Empoli, in which they have registered nine wins and one draw, making them the side that we have faced the most in the competition without tasting defeat. Holy hell. If, they don't, if that wasn't some positive voodoo, we did not sell Romelu Lukaku. In those 10 ties, Inter have registered 16 goals and conceded just three, only against... Uh, I'm not going to read the rest of that sentence. All right, form's on our side, history's on our side. Um, the latest statistics are on our side. Uh, since joining Inter, Nico Barella is the player with the most Coppa Italia appearances to his name in eight since the season 19-20. You can tell my Barella bias is nice and nice and big with that absolutely useless waste of a fact. <laughs> Ian Dzeko has scored eight of his 11 goals so far this campaign at home. Another useless one for your ass. Uh, Lautaro Martinez is our top goal scorer still. Nothing really else to talk about about this game. Um, Opposition-wise, you know, I just saw Milan score. <laughs> oh, you're joking. Did you seriously, cuz? <laughs> yeah, man. It's uh, it's peak. It's peak. I wouldn't be this gassed this morning if it didn't happen because, you know, they're still a team at the end of the day. They're still a squad. They need to pick themselves up from this. Remember the sort of losses that we've taken in the past and had to pick ourselves up from this. I've said this before about Inter when they haven't looked like it. You're not a title-looking squad. You're not a title-looking team. This Milan team is not a title-looking team. And I'm not ashamed of saying that now, even if they were to run away with it till the end of the year. Right now, they're not a title-looking team. They do have injuries. It's unfortunate. But Pioli's still your coach. Pioli's still your coach. You know, at the end of the day, he's only achieved so much. You really need to have a taste and a sniff and a grunt for wanting to get a trophy. Uh, Pietro says Romagnoli is back. We need Lukaku just for the derby. Nick Snox, I'm starting to get worried with Juve's winning streak. I hope they drop some points soon to calm my nerves. We are shitting it, aren't we? Nah, it's all good, man. They've had some injuries as well, but you know, they're still not playing great football. The Dybala situation isn't great. Um, you know, that's why three points to Juve against Milan this weekend. Then I'm starting to talk about it. Then I'm starting to say, like, they're not completely out and about in the wilderness just yet. 
Apparently, Inter is already looking for a Jekyll replacement, says Il Flo. Uh, what do you think? Who do you think Inter should get? So I've said this a lot before, um, so I won't spend too much time on it, brother. It's got to be one of Scamaca, Alvarez, or Raspadori. Now, Raspadori isn't a like-for-like replacement, physicality and technical ability-wise for Jekyll, so it's got to be one of the latter two, or sorry, Scamaca or Alvarez. For me personally, I would go for Alvarez. I've watched as much as I possibly can without watching a full River Plate fixture of him, and he's strong, he's tenacious, he's tough, he runs hard, he's, he looks very, very fit and ready, ready to come into a team like us, and that Argentine connection would be great would be great. Pietro says he's down the bottom right now, says we need Dusan Vlahovic. Now, Vlahovic would complete this side. However, we can't put money down. No money down. Freebies or cheapies only or loans with options slash obligations. Let's see how Pinamonti plays against our B side. Uh, is he allowed to even take the field? I know. No, nah, he should. I think he's allowed. I don't know. I'm 50-50. Can someone, if someone could cross reference that in this chat, that would be incredible. Otherwise, I'll do it afterwards. Can Pinamonti play for Empoli in the Coppa Italia? Okay, we will win the Derby and they will fall out of the top four after that. that. That's what I'm hoping. That's what I'm hoping, man. You know, that's really, really what I want. Okay, uh, no probable, uh, probable formazione just yet on Sky Sports, um, which is disappointing, but that's okay. We'll have a look at a different website just to talk about the Empoli squad. Um, you know, slash Empoli side. I'll just give me a sec. Bear with me. All right. Copper Italia preview. We'll use this website right here. All right. So, yeah, basically we are completely fit. We've got absolutely no injuries in the squad, which is fantastic. Fringe players are expected to get a start in your likes of Gagliardini and Ranocchia. Empoli, meanwhile, they'll be out uh, without their full-time fullback, uh, Fabiano Parisi, who's actually a decent player, to be honest. He's got a uh, hamstring problem. Um, they'll be replacing, uh, sorry, uh, teenage centre-back Mattia Vitti is coming into the side. Their injured midfielder, Nicolas Haas, who was selected for the win over Verona, is expected to stay injured and he won't play as well. Um, so one of the squad players, Leo Stulak or uh, Christian Aslani, is going to come in as well. Um, he's got plenty of options to choose from up front. Um, and we have got confirmation on this particular website that uh, the coach is going to... Yeah, okay. So Andrea Azzoli is going to have to make a choice in this one. Andrea Azzoli does not have Pinamonti up front. That's a great way. We've just cross-referenced it. He will need to play uh, Lama Lamantia or Cutroni or Mancuso up top. Um, Mancuso and Cutroni, I think, would be a little more dangerous. But Pinamonti, I don't think, is able nor available to play. So if that's the case, that's probably good for us. Um, I'll get a predicted lineup up on the screen now, just in text. Sorry about the lack of graphics and whatnot, but it is what it is. Thank you to Sports Mall for at least getting a predicted lineup out there. Uh, they're predicting that Radu starts in goals. I highly, 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 highly doubt that. Highly doubt that. He's never, ever going to take the pitch ever. Ever, ever, ever. Um, God, look how annoying it is to just have text on the screen. I feel like I'm back in English class. It looks disgusting. I'm so sorry about that. Um, but just navigate your way to the, to the bottom of the screen here. Radu... Slash Handanovic, Ranocchia, Devray, Bastoni. Um, you know, why not just put D'Ambrosio in there and Ranocchia in there? R rest two out of the three centre backs if you need to. It's Venezia. It's Venezia. Bastoni, Devray, and Scrinia can all score against Venezia on the weekend. It's not going to be hard. If all of our starters are fit against Venezia, we have to win that game. Rest as many players in this one as humanly possible. Darmian, Vecino, Vidal, Gagliardini. There it is. Your meat and no veg. Your meat and no vegetables, bro. So meaty. So meaty. Di Marco, Martinez, and Correa. I like this, to be honest, now that I'm thinking about it. Maybe put Sanchez back on the bench and see if, um, you know, you start um, Cola. Empoli's possible starting 11. It's um, Uikani. Yukani, sorry. Stojanovic, Romagnoli, Viti, Marquiza. Bandinelli, Stulak, Zerkowski, Henderson, Mancuso, and Cotroni, as expected with those up two up top. So no reason why we still can't still can't win this game comfortably, um, I think. So we'll see. Hershen, welcome, bro. If, especially if you are new. I've never seen you before. Haaland next year with PIF. Doubt it. 
don't think Pino is going to play yet. We just saw that, man. Um, Carl, how you doing, man? Haven't seen your name before either, or maybe just once or twice. Welcome back. Make sure you like, share, subscribe to the Inter Worldwide new YouTube channel. I think we're almost at 300 subs in about three weeks, which is quite good considering. So let's keep it bumping up on that road to 1K. Hershen says, since he has left with Sampdoria, maybe he has left already. I didn't know if he could be eligible for this match day squad before he departed for Sampdoria. It's going to be an interesting one. Let's talk predictions. Drop your predictions in the chat. For me personally, I think Inter's going to the quarterfinals. I can't sit here and not predict it. My personal beef will be if we end up going into extra time. There's no need for extra time. 2-1, KG, very KG, uh, possible late goal as well. I'll go a goal for Correa because I think he starts this game. And I will go with a goal for Lord Roberto Gagliardini doing what he does best, scoring against minnows, absolute minnows. So 2-1 for me. Galliardini on the score sheet. Many players will still have a good game. Many players will still have a good game. Um, Tim, thanks for coming in. I apologize, but I, I am stepping out soon. I have no idea what's going on. Anyway. Just a lot of noise outside my house, that's all. Uh, Empoli have a young center mid called Ricky, uh, who we are apparently interested for next season. I'll have to check it out a little bit more. I've heard of his name, but I don't tune in often enough to Empoli besides watching a lot of their extended highlights. I think I've caught three Empoli games all season, including the one that we played against them. Marvel's in the chat as well, man. I was just about to jet, but I've got a few couple of people coming in here. So let me know what you're thinking. Let me know what your thoughts are. 3-1 Vidal, Correa and Ambrosio. Yeah, sounds about right. Sounds about right to me. Just give me a sec. Let me let my dog inside. All right. So 3-1 Vidal, Correa, D'Ambrosio. If Vidal starts, he's definitely a chance to score. I just think Galliardini is uh, probably more likely to find the net just due to his history. Tim says we need to rotate and see how the game goes before we start taking Coppa too seriously. Scudetto is priority 100%, especially after this result this morning. It is, it is imperative to win that game against Venezia. That Venezia game just became catalytic to the rest of the campaign. You have Milan and Napoli straight after. You have to win that game at home against Venezia. Marvel thinks we're getting a clean sheet tomorrow, eh? Clean sheet would be nice. You know, we've done very well with clean sheets lately. Um, keeping Atalanta scoreless is always good. Grande Samir, what a great game Handanovic had. What a fantastic game Handanovic had yesterday. Watching those highlights back and forth yesterday, I actually wanted to keep watching the highlights. I watched them like four times, which is weird because, you know, when you don't win a game, you don't tend to watch the highlights as much. But I was so impressed with the fact that Handanovic kept that, that clean sheet that I just kept watching it back to keep reminding myself. I'm like, that's a good point. That's a good point. That's a point gain. We didn't lose. This is a good result. Like, I'm happy. I'm happy. It's a weird one. Tim says, I actually laughed out loud seeing how unlucky Milan got so, so undeserved. I also laughed excessively loud, bro. I also shook my head in this manner. <laughs> like if that happened to us, not good, not good, not good. I don't want to laugh about it too much. It's, there's still plenty of time for Italian football to bite us in the cooler. 16 games is a, is a world away. But we just need to hold our own now. Three huge fixtures coming up in Serie A. Venezia, Milan, Napoli. You come out of that. You come out of that with five points out of nine. It's not horrendous. Repeat that sentence back to yourself. You come out of those three with five points out of nine. It's not bad. That's insane. Get out of there with seven. Get out of there with nine. Holy hell, that's probably not going to happen. But you get Milan has always been lucky. Yes, good. Milan has always been lucky during these years, so why not be unlucky sometimes? 100%. Marotta is close to Nandez, cross-referencing Hershin. Cross-referencing. I haven't heard anything. Nathan Nandez. 
Nothing, bro. I got nothing since the second of January. That's old news still to me. Old news still to me, unless I'm looking at backdated. Nah, old news to me, man. Old news to me. Wait, hold on. I've got something here from Passioni Inter. Let's have a look. Il Cagliari apre al prestito Fernandez. Don't think so, G. Don't think so, man. I don't think that's going to happen. No, see, at the, at the moment, still not enough. Still not enough for me. It's from Passione Inter, uh, an Inter blog sort of news site uh, from Italy. But for me, we're going to have to see a lot more traction to start predicting that Nandez is even coming in for a loan in January. Tim says, if we beat Milan, at least draw Napoli and beat Venezia and win our catch-up game, we'll be in the driving seat. That catch-up game is really, really interesting, isn't it? The fact that Bologna submitted the team sheet, but then also didn't submit the appeal. Is there a deadline? Does somebody know this? Does somebody know if there's a deadline where they need to cut this off? Um, a decision needs to be made, man. Like... They'll probably say to play it at the back end of the season, but will Bologna want to keep playing at the back end of the season? We discussed that earlier, but I'll be very interested to hear if there's sort of if there's a deadline when a decision sort of needs to be made in the courts. Nandez on loan, I wouldn't say no. We need every little bit of depth we can get. We're leading the pack in Serie A, but I don't. I hope Marotta and Ozilio and Co don't see it as a as a blank January for that. You know, one signing is always better than no signings. Just just even just for morale, get a player into the dressing room. Get anybody, anybody in for a loan. You've probably already talked about it, but any more thoughts about uh, Ginta and Dybala? Actually have not touched on either of them one bit. Ginta, I think he's only asking for four and a half, five mil. Decent option. However, when you're sort of bringing center backs up and in, you don't necessarily start them with a salary like that. Um, but at the end of the day, it's a free transfer. Beggars can't be choosers. He's a good player. He's good enough. He's well good enough. He would walk into any team in Serie A, at least as the first option off the bench for Napoli, for Milan, a fit Milan, for us as well, and for Juve. So it makes sense. Any team in Serie A that gets this guy for free are lucky duckies. However, our, our wage bill is a little bit of an issue. We'll wait till the end of the season to gauge a little bit more of that. Do we bring someone in for Sensi? Sensi never plays. So that's probably what we're thinking. Do we need to bring someone in for Sensi? Probably. Bring someone technical in, man. Bring someone technical in. Is Nandez that sort of player? I don't know. But, you know, we. I'm always in the mood for more technical, creative sort of playmaker players. Do I watch Onana play in the African Cup? I only caught the first half of Cameroon's first game. Other than that, I have not been watching him at all. And that's crap on my behalf. I should probably start watching him a bit more. Have you been watching him? What have you been seeing? White Suburban Kid, back again, always present. You are a loyal one. Pietro, there's no deadline, I think. They need to find a date. Fucking Italy. Uh, apparently, Gladbach is offering him out for five mil right now. Offering him out for five mil right now, as in in January. Like, only five mil up front, you can take him in January. That's not bad. That's not bad. Pietro says, wouldn't replace De, replace De Vrij for Ginta? I wouldn't replace De Vrij for almost anybody still, man, but... You need to look at football with as much emotion as you can before it becomes illogical. And we need cash. We still need an injection of funds. We need to keep at least one player moving. We need to keep one player moving. We're not in that luxury spot just yet where we can just say, no, nah, stay, stay, Lautaro, stay, Stefan, stay, everybody stay. New contracts for everybody. We're not in that position. We've done an extremely good job steering the ship and keeping it afloat, but we're not in that position just yet. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, the the Dybala thing, the Dybala thing is nuts. The Dybala thing is nuts. Um, I saw that Juventus basically retracted their offer. I think he's leaving. I don't think he's coming to Inter still. You know, that would really start rocking some boats. But I think he's out. And I think you'll see the likes of Barca, Madrid, maybe PSG maybe even Bayern Munich and a couple of English teams. This is this is a this is a world-class player at the end of the day leaving for free. And it's not like he'll demand double digits in the millions. He won't demand 10 in this market. So if you're a powerhouse club in the world that's got money, that's got even just a little bit of money to spend, you're probably looking at a decent package deal for Paulo Dybala. 
something a club will definitely snap up and it won't be us in the driver's seat for this one, no matter what the rumors say, nor the past relationship with Beppe. Alex, how you doing, man? Do you think we should go for the domestic treble? I think we should go for every game, every trophy. We've got the depth. We've got the best squad in the league, in the country. I think there's absolutely no excuse to not go for everything. But at the same time, that slip up from Milan this morning, that opened a gateway against Venezia that wasn't supposed to exist. And three points against them is like taking a leap towards um, towards the end of the season objectives. You know, it'll be a catalytic win. So let's hope that we do it and we don't just have a 1-1 one, one scoreline, which is probably paying something like $24 at the betting agency, which means I'll chuck a sneaky 10 on uh, just in case. <laughs> but was, um, this season, I've been left with so much faith with this side, with Inzaghi and the team, that that hasn't been the case once. And I have so much faith in this side that even though our finishing has been lackluster and poor and inconsistent at times, we build so well and we create so much. And it's going to continue on, especially in the next couple of games, because we're up against Empoli and Venezia, two sides that we are better than. I don't expect us to even remotely be on the back foot for anything more than a few minutes in either of these fixtures. So let me know in the comments below if you agree. Uh, are you a little nervous about this Venezia game? You know, priority wise, are you going to be watching the Empoli game with one eye on the Venezia game, considering how important that it's going to be? Um, yeah, let me know because I'm excited. I'm excited and I hope that this team are excited as well because they deserve to be excited. Guys, if you haven't, please already. We're up to 68 members now, which is absolutely awesome. The league code is up on the screen. Serie A Fantasy, the best game to put your knowledge of Serie A to the test. And look how good I am. Still in the Champions League spots, fourth place. I don't know how I'm going to catch up to these guys, man. I can never catch up. Ever, ever. I think, oh, even Kurva Nord Reza is catching up to me under, underneath. But that's okay because my, oh, he's flirting. He's flirting with the top of the table, uh, Uncle Sharma. But make sure you head over to Serie A Fantasy. Use the league code to join the Inter Worldwide Private League. Even if you are not an Inter fan, share it around to any of your friends that like Serie A and go, hey, just jump in, play some Serie A Fantasy from now to the end of the season. You can win a bunch of prizes week in, week out. Um, I know it's late in the season, but, you know, get a bit of a jump on for next season as well. You can make plenty of transfers. Uh, do I need to change anyone? Yes, I need to change Berardi at the moment. So I might as well do that now. Um, other than that, I keep getting some pretty good points. Oh, did Cambiasso pick up a knock this morning as well? Crap. He's still got three points. Let's get Berardi out of here. And let's get Cambiasso out of here because I do have... Oh, wait, Ibanez is shh as well. Not good. Not good. Changes need to be made. Changes need to be made. Tim's almost cracking the top 10. <laughs> My guy. All right, how much money do we got to blow? 24 euros. Let's start with the midfield. Let's start with the midfield. And just buy someone extremely expensive. Malinkovic Savage. Ooh. How many? Uh, no Lazio players in there, eh? No Lazio players in there. Pedro usually gets a few points, though, when he attacks. Who's Lazio playing next? Ah, never mind. I like Pasolic lately. Why not? Let's get Pasolic in there for a run, for a bit of a run. Um, what else? What else? What else? Defenders. Uh, Mani, Teo. Teo's been back and scoring again. How many Milan players do I have on this team? None. Typical me. How much do we have left? 10. I got, I got good money. This has been a good season in fantasy when I look back on it. I've, I've played smart. Smart enough. How many Napoli players? I can afford some luxury here. Let's go with Mario Rui. Oh, it's a midfielder that I need on the bench. Shit. 10 million for a, for a decent midfielder. I shouldn't be too hard to get a decent midfielder on the bench. Can I afford another Lazio? Yeah, no, Lazio. Cool. Pedro Rodriguez. That's easy. Man, this is a sexy looking fantasy team, man. Honestly. Yes, I can sacrifice 1.4 and a 5 deduction for this. That's no problem. Guys, make sure you're liking and subscribing to Inter Worldwide. Thank you to everyone who's come across to the new channel. It's uh, very much appreciated. Nick Knox says, I'll finish with this. Our finishing might not be the best, but it's good enough against mid-table and lower-table clubs. So I'm not too worried if we win the games against those clubs. 100%, man. Pietro says he's not nervous at all. It's good. Thoughts on Luis Felipe rumors. Bro, ever since Luis Felipe clowned around on Joaquin Correa, I want that guy nowhere near our club, to be honest. But at the end of the day, uh, a good transfer is a good transfer, and a freebie is a freebie, and a cheapie is a cheapie at the end of the day. Um, this is a funny tweet. I'm just going to share this with everybody just so we can end on a laugh. 
Twitter game is good when you like a lot of Serie A accounts. So there's Chris DeSantis, the boy drinking those Milan tears. <laughs> oh, man, the internet is the internet. Fabrizio Romano says, Inter midfielder Stefano Sensi is set to join Sampdoria. Straight loan until the end of the season. Agreement reached today. Deal is now in place to be completed. Uh, Marco Giampolo is back as the new manager as well. Bizarre scenes, bizarre scenes. Um, Forza Spezia, as we can see, things are looking good. Lots of people laughing at Milan. Lots of people laughing at Milan. Inter played Lazio, Juve, and Atalanta in seven days. It came away with four points in the Supercoppa. And Interestia dissatisfied elite mentality. Fantastic. Good stuff. You like to hear the positives like that. Um, any other news or anything to look at? Hey, Classifica, why not? Let's look at it again. With a game in hand, Inter at 50. Milan at 48, Napoli 46. What's a Napoli, man? Get up there into that second spot. Atalanta 42, Juve 41, Fiorentina, Roma uh, well behind that chasing pack now for top four. You imagine that Fiorentina and Roma, it's a little bit too much ground to make up on. A little bit too much ground. Uh, so Roma in uh, seventh position, Lazio eighth, Torino and Hellas make up the rest of the top of the league top 10 it's going to be interesting man it's going to be a very interesting next few weeks that is going to be it from me today pietro having a good laugh mighty mal coming in as well good to see you bro um yeah like and subscribe forza inter forza inter worldwide i hope we're coming out of the coppa italia going through to the quarterfinals because inzaghi's a cup coach if inzaghi's looking at three games left to win another trophy best believe he'll go for it but but yes fiorentina do have a game in hand um, but you know, all eyes on Venezia. That's all I'm going to say. That's the focal point of this video. We could have summed it up 47 minutes in one. Let's go to Venezia and get three points. Ciao guys. Take care. Love to your families.